everyone, welcome back to Kirsty Colour and Sketch. Today I'm going to be doing a time lapse of this beautiful doggy. This one here. Now, if you know uh, Shannon, Shannon Chopping Hayes, you'll know how many pets she has, and she's very kindly sent me lots of reference pictures of all her animals so that I can practice my pan pastel pet portraits. So if I'm right, I believe this is little Baxter. So he's just got the gorgeous eyes. I was really drawn to this one because he's got one brown eye and he's got one um, blue eye. And he's just got lots, lots of really nice texture in his fur and, and lots of beautiful colours. So I thought it would be quite a fun one to do. I've just sort of swatched out a few colours what I think um, might be similar. And they're with the Faber-Castell Pit Pastel Pencils. But I'll only be using them on top of the pan pastels. So this bit will come later on. I have got some pan pastels to the side of me of what I'm going to use. So the paper I'm using is the Pastel Matte by Claire Fontelle. And if you're not familiar with it, it is this one. Now it is an expensive paper, but I've found it that I enjoy doing pan pastel pet portraits on this the most. Um, it's a really lovely paper. You can get different sets in different sizes. So in this set we do have some sort of mid-tone papers which are really nice. I do like the light grey and the maize for doing the portraits on. Um, apparently with this paper you don't need to use a fixative. So yeah, because it can dull down some of your... Sometimes using a fixative can dull down your illustration as well when you finish your painting. So I'm going to, I've already rough sketched it out, it took me quite a while because the thing that I struggle most with is the proportions. So the amount of times I've erased that nose and those eyes is just unbelievable. But I sketched this out just using one of my pastel pencils. So it was easier that way for me. So I've taped it down and I've left this amount of border around the outside. This is a nine by seven. Um, piece of Claire Fontel pit pastel mat. So yeah, I'm super excited to get this started. So let's get going. So the tools I'm going to be using are the Pan Pastel Soft Tools, S-O-F-F-T, soft. And they come like this. Um, I've got two of the same head here actually, but there is quite a slimmer one, a slimmer oval one. And then you have a square one as well. Um, I've not got, I'm not using the square one today, but that's the rectangular one, should we say. And these are little rectangular sponges. But I'm mainly going to be using these two today. And I'm going to be using this little sponge for the background. It's easier to get it on. So yeah, hope you enjoy this time lapse and I'll catch you at the end of the video.
welcome back. If you've got this fair into the video, thank you so much for watching this fair. Um, I have to do a lot of these sort of pet portraits time lapsed because they take me so long. Um, so far on this dog, I think I've worked about three or four hours. Um, I'm finding this one quite a challenge. Um, as you know, if you've recently started watching my channel or been around for quite a while, I've only just started doing pet portraits, so I'm relatively new to it. I think this is my fourth one. So still learning, still practicing. Everything is chaotic. Um, I don't do anything in a particular way in which I see other artists, you know, professional artists do it because I am self-taught and I'm just sort of finding my own way. Um, I am finding this one challenging. He's got the most beautiful fur coat. It's got a lot of texture to it, really a lot of texture. And I want to try and get that into here and hopefully you can see that coming across but it is taking me quite a while um initially i think i put quite a bit too much pan pastel down on the pastel mat so what happens if you put too much down to start off with you're sort of filling up the two for the paper and then it leaves little room for pencil work on top so you've got to be really careful and i still am um trying to rectify all my mistakes as i go along and i do more pet portraits i'm trying to learn from my mistakes so next time i need to do a lighter layer of pan pastel and then give myself more tooth to work with to get the pencil work on top especially something like this where it is a lot of um a lot of details a lot of texture a lot of flicking motions to get all these in but hopefully he's, he's looking okay it's not looking too bad for you know my fourth attempt at a pet pan pastel pet portrait so i'm got i thought i'd do a little tiny bit in real time so if you've got um this fair into the video this is a nice little treat for whoever stayed tuned in um so i'm gonna do a bit of it and just have a little chat with you at the same time um only a little bit because it does take quite a lot of concentration and this is a challenge to me so yeah let's get going so the pencils i've been using ma the majority of the time are the faber castell pit, pit pastel pencils which are brilliant for fur and um, they, they keep the quite a hard pastel pencil um which is good for fur because they do keep that point now I did, just out of interest, pick myself up a single stock Caran d'Ache pastel pencil and I got the Chinese white just to try it out. Now these ones are very soft, so unlike the Faber-Castell pit, pasto pit pastels that I had, um, brilliant for fur, these are really, really soft, really soft. Now I've found that this white is a lot better than the Faber-Castell white. It goes on a lot brighter onto your page. So if you need a really white white, it's going on brighter. It's it's just laying down better on top of the paper. Um, so maybe if you're interested in a good pastel white, this one. Um, the only thing is my sharpener has like, you know, worn it down quite a lot. Um, but it's worth it for what this is doing on the page. So you can see I'm just working around his little um, nose area here and I have just been putting these, trying to brighten up some of this. So I've gone in around the nose quite compactly, small little lines and I'm just flicking out all over the shore. <sighs> Occasionally blowing the dust away but yeah, trying to follow the hair strokes in the direction that they're going i'm not going to do too much more around here because i do need to do his body so i'll perhaps bring in some extra lines from the face over the body once i've done the body or else there'll be no point i'm going to be covering up my lines that i've made there 
So I am just going to move over to this side of the face here and I'm going to work on this for a bit. Now this is just a protective sheet. You do get these in between each layer of pastel on that paper in your pad. And I do just use it to rest my hand on because after you've took so long working on something, you do not want to rub your hand um, against that. So just looking at this, hopefully you can see my reference picture here. I have put some undertones in just sort of flip um a base of color that i thought was popping through um the bottom so to start with i am just going to use a couple of my gray colors to get some hair stroke gray hair strokes in because there is a mixed bag of colors in this beautiful dog if um you missed me mentioning at the start this is shannon chopping hazes dog now as you know she has lots and lots of animals but this is one of them this is baxter um shannon he's a challenge he is a challenge he is challenging me so much this little doggy so much i'm gonna say it's hard <laughs> this is hard hard i'll be having a long break after this one <laughs> to recover <laughs> so i apologize if i don't do him justice but he is super super challenging i'm finding it rather hard so yeah i do apologize i'm just getting some more gray tones in there we'll bring in some light a few light grays and then i'm just gonna get in with my whites bring in some of that dark brown actually where's my dark brown pencil <sighs> gonna do a bit more of a brown I'm dying to get onto that body I'm a bit Scared about this face going wrong here. But we'll see. Bring a bit of darkness there. We'll go over it with the white so it won't be so harsh. But we do need these sort of brown undertones here. You do need sort of darker layers or layers underneath so that when you put the white over the top it is going to show up right i'm going to block in some of the white sections so as you can see i blocked in this section here so this bit is this bit here that's curving right over and then just from it we have another little bit that's coming down here don't worry about this standing out in, like a soft one because you know the hair strokes are going to go over the top and we're all, it's going to come together nicely in the end so that's that bit there then we've got another one that sort of goes into that one so I'm just drawing these in like that and then sort of from here we have a bit of a cluster there like here it will all be going to the nose into her strokes shortly but that's that little cluster and then we have one that comes around here so it drops to about here goes up under that one And again into the fur so that's my rough little guide and blocking in of the white sections so I might take another little break I've been doing it in sort of 
hourly two hourly intervals and then having a break and then coming back to it because what i find if i start overworking myself and sitting here for too long that's when i do start making a lot of mistakes so i would rather have a little break go for a brew assess it's good to take pictures of your work as well so when i stop filming and i step back i'll take a take a picture i'll just get my camera take a picture of these images side by side and then look at the picture on my phone and then you can spot little mistakes or little areas where you want to work on more easily um i always do that i've not finished the nose ev yet i've not done any detailing on the nose i've just blocked that in for now so I, that's going to be the very last um thing that i do the details on the nose just so you're aware that that is not finished yet <laughs> But he's not finished. It's not his nose. So again, I'm not going to do too much down here because I need to fill the body in first before flicking um, into the body. But what I'm going to do is work on this, work on getting all this fur into the nose area. So you can see that with this Caran d'Ache pencil, it is really soft. It leaves a lot of a lot of pencil dust. Just keep blowing it away. It's fine. Um, you can see a little shadow around that would be around here somewhere. I think of greys. Just fill that in. It's a bit a bit grey showing through. I'm gonna leave that out and work around the rest of it so sort of like that sort of shape left out I might even bring in some more creams on top of this so I'll do my hair strokes in white get it to the centre of the nose and then I'll bring in some more yellow tones, some ochre, maybe even a bit of pink. You can see there's a bit of a pink undertone. Now I did put some in, but it's sort of been covered up a little bit, but there's like, oh, like a pink undertone around here, as well as black. So let's get this. do quite a bit of a block colour there it's very bright there at the bottom apologize if I've gone quiet like I say I'm finding this a challenge so I don't want to mess it up too much <laughs> yeah I don't want to mess it up too much I'm gonna bring a bit of that light grey in here just to get rid of a bit more of that I didn't want it so yellowy over there But if you've ever thought about doing pan pastel pet portraits, just have a go. That's my advice. Just have a go. Learn from your own mistakes. Because you'll surprise yourself. You will surprise yourself. Go over the top now. And I was super happy to receive the most amazing message on Instagram the other day. Um, our lovely Karen Valentine, if you're not already subscribed to her YouTube channel and Instagram, go check her out, Karen Valentine. She is absolutely amazing at colouring, absolutely amazing. And um, the Mariola event that we recently took part in, hosted by Shannon, 
um Karen coloured the wolf page I forgot the exact name of it um but it's the Mariola wolf page and the fur she did on that wolf was absolutely amazing and I just asked her if she'd ever you know tried to draw or did she draw and she said no she wasn't very good at drawing and I just said just you know you don't have to do a brilliant drawing just do a rough sketch and then just colour it with colour the fur with your pet coloured pencils as if you were colouring a colouring page just you know use the same technique as you're doing the fur on that colouring page and anyway she gave it a shot and oh my word the um she drew her dog all in coloured pencils um her dog cooper and it is absolutely amazing and it's a very first shot at it as well and i can't fault it i cannot see any mistakes with it she's better than me <laughs> she's better than me um but yeah and i received the most lovely message from her just thanking me for the encouragement for just telling her to give it a shot um yeah it's so lovely to get messages like that and she's she's absolutely brilliant so if you're not already subscribed to karen valentine just head on over and give her page a little look but i do believe she's drawn or halfway through drawing her other dog now so i'm just gonna block out this bit here there's a white bit there what sort of comes from here so we'll get that bit in i think as well i might switch to my other white and use these for the brightest bits so i'll just switch to my faber castell white just for a second where i get some more subtle white strokes can you see how this one isn't as bright and it doesn't lay down as full if that makes sense this one is more of a you know you can get the detailed hair strokes so there's a little a flick on his eye there as well where is it there uh, cannot get it in properly <laughs> yeah and then what's coming down here but these ones are just a way of getting in more subtle color more subtle flicks it's not the bright white that we get with the Karen Dash. I've just put the heating on before I came up as well. I'm roasting now. I need to go back down and turn it off. <laughs> so I'm just going to get in some of my brown paint. I think this is the right one. It's like an ochre. We'll give it a little go and see. See if it's the right one. No, I could do with a darker shade actually. That's a little bit too bright. Where's my darker brown? Let me think this one might be it. Or is that the. Yeah, this one's a bit better. So you can see here he's got this dark sort of little triangle there. I just spot little details that I want to get in bit by bit. So you can take browns over the white and flick. That's what takes away the harshness of the line and sort of blends it into the fur and makes it look like fur that we've just blocked in. I 
I hope that's not my postman and go knock on the door. <laughs> I might have to stop filming in a minute. I have ordered some stuff though. Oh, no, he's just posted it through. You probably heard him. He's always on the phone. He walks around with his hands free and then he's always on the phone to someone. He must get bored on his uh, rounds. <laughs> Right guys, I'm going to give it a little break at doing real time just because I'm going to stop here. I'm going to go and get a drink and then I'm going to come back and time lapse the body, the nose and a few little extras on his face. But I hope it's given you a little insight anyway. I hope, you know, gives you a bit of maybe inspiration to go and try doing one yourself maybe. So... Enjoy the time lapse. So now it's complete and I'm just pulling the masking tape off. This bit is super, super satisfying. <laughs> but you can also see how messy my desk is when it all comes off. Look how white my desk is underneath all that. There's one thing about pan pastels and pastels in general. They are really messy. Really messy. So I will be giving my desk a proper clean later on.
I like putting the masking tape round it gives it that really nice border and just really finishes it off. I find this really really challenging but there he is little Baxter I hope you like him Shannon please do give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're new and drop me a comment down below would you try drawing would you try pan pastels and there's the reference picture thanks for watching